Liberals have called a snap meeting today to discuss the party's stance on The Voice. It's an opportunity for the Liberals to rebrand, I guess, after the shocking Aston by-election defeat. There is a growing chorus of Liberal Party members who want a conscience vote on whether The Voice referendum goes ahead. That's the Labor model. Joining me live now is a referendum working group member and Uluru statement advocate, Thomas Mayo. Great to see you in person, uh, Thomas. First of all, I want to start with this news poll today that shows a majority of Australians in a majority of states at this point would still support The Voice. Do you take heart in that or is there a danger that it, it still looks too close? No, I certainly take heart in it. It indicates that the sentiment of the Australian people is with us. Um, they've walked with us for a long time now. The Uluru Statement from the Heart inviting the Australian people was made in 2017. And so there's been uh, a lot of conversations and, you know, to see these results really tells us that we can succeed when the referendum is held. And it has taken been taken at a time, this news poll, where debate has been quite fierce. We've seen two weeks of questions in Parliament that I think were really designed to you go to the, the very ends of what this voice might look like and, and what is not included in the actual referendum. What's your take on that? Yeah, so for most of the time we haven't had the words. Um, we've had draft words, we've had a draft question. And a couple of Thursdays ago, we came to an agreement with the government. The Indigenous leaders uh, negotiated a, a set of words that um, are true to the intent of what this referendum is ultimately about, um, while at the same time being something that the Australian people can support. And, uh, you know, without those words, we still have maintained this support uh, with, uh, without really having a, a big launch of a yes campaign yet, without the civics education that a lot of Australians need, uh, with uh, a whole lot of misinformation out there as well, uh, we can, we've continued to hold up this support and I think it can only get better. What do you say to the Liberal Party room today? They're meeting right now. It looks like they're going to firm up on a no stance to the Albanese, the referendum working groups model, essentially. What do you say to them? I say to the Liberal Party to, you know, reach into your hearts, to really think about... Um, what this is for Australia, which is truly unifying. You know, it is something that is, is well overdue. You know, it's about time that we took a step to building a better relationship with Indigenous people, um, giving us what we're asking for, which is just to, to be able to take responsibility for our own lives, for our own communities. And the only way that we can take responsibility is to truly be heard, to be able to sit at the table, talk about the solutions. So I want them to think practically as well. Um, but this is a, a very practical thing for us to do that will help the communities. Mm. And I think the only way that they can do that is to take... Uh, to remove the, the obstacles to this, as in to stop playing politics with Indigenous lives. This is something that should go beyond politics. It is something that is... Uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing to lose for Australia and everything to gain. Yeah. And I just hope that they can... I, I'm, I'm going to be hopeful today. You know, I really yeah. hope that they'll support this. So would you accept a conscience vote as a way forward? Um, do you think that is the right course of action? Or what is... From reporting this morning, we know that perhaps they say no, no to this, but want to see a voice that enshrines local voices. What do you think about that? The voice that we're proposing does, um, you know, amplify local voices. Does it? it How? Absolutely. Well, it is elected from the, the people. The, the people choose who is in this voice. Uh, and that is that is a, that is how you know. Like mm. at the moment, the people in our communities can't choose who represents us. We can't hold people that say they speak for us to account in any way. Mm. And a democratic process to allow us to do that um, brings the voices from the communities to the places where decisions are made. Um, it's not an elitist thing if we are choosing the voices, you know, if we're holding them to account. Mm. Um, it really is the voices of the community. Some of the criticism we get is that the referendum working group and the members of it are the elites. You're not actually the people on the ground. Are you an elite? What does that mean? Well, if anybody that works hard and, you know, is making a difference for their community is suddenly elite, I totally disagree with that observation. 
I have my family, my community, you know, I, I do this because I love my children. Um, this, is, this is about Australia and it's about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Yeah. And that's not an elite thing to, to work hard for a better future. How is it going to change the lives of Aboriginal people? Day in and day out on this program, we report about violence, domestic abuse, sexual assault in Aboriginal camps around Alice Springs. Talk about alcohol abuse, um, systemic, generational problems. How will this start to change things, do you think? And I, and I don't ask you that as a trap, as mm. this, the voice being some kind of perfect policy, mm. but do you truly believe that a change in the constitution, a voice to parliament, will start to see those changes and why? Yeah, absolutely, because we've seen repeatedly throughout the history of our federation, mm. when Indigenous people have created the ability to be heard, our voices have been silenced. And whenever we've spoken, um, it has always been about the policies and the legislation and the programs that are able to support our communities to recover from what has been a, a, a history that is, you know, we should all be quite ashamed of, uh, absolutely ashamed of, the way that Indigenous people have been treated. For example, my father, you know, wasn't an Australian citizen for, for most of his childhood. Um, his, my grandparents, uh, you know, there was, they couldn't decide who they could marry without the intervention of, of a, a protector. Uh, we couldn't, uh, you know, there were curfews on my people. Um, our wages were held by the government. We haven't been able to generate um, wealth, you know, like other Australians. Um, and, and all of these things are based on the legislation that is made and those policies. And a voice in a democracy is a really powerful thing because it can influence those laws and policies. And so the, the crime rates that we see, you know, the, the social ills in our community are not because Indigenous people are different. It's not because we're innately criminal. It is, it is certainly affected by the laws and policies that are made and a voice will make a massive difference. OK, well, we'll see where the Liberal Party ends up today. Thomas Mayer, pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, Laura.